I now want to familiarize you with something that a lot of people don't even consider when they start working on a website, but I want to make you aware of it, and that is copywriting. It is important to understand copyright laws when you start building your websites. So let me give you an overview, and if you decide to, you can look into this a bit deeper, but I'm going to give you my overview on dealing with copyright. So first of all, I'm on the educator.com website, and if I scroll down to the bottom, if you take a look, you can see there's a copyright symbol down here, way down here, and it says the year. It also says the company name and the words all rights reserved. Now that is on the educator website. If we move over to the Adobe website and I scroll down, you'll see something very similar. Most websites now do have copyright information at the bottom of the page. And more often than not, it involves just the word copyright. We have the copyright symbol, we have the year, the company name, and all rights reserved. And not all websites do mention that piece. But what exactly does that mean? Well, to be honest, your copywriting is protected whether it says that information or not. The idea behind protected work or copywriting, it is a global piece, but I'm going to go to specifically a U.S. copyright office to talk about this. And copyright.gov gives you a lot of information about copyright. So this is one location where you can go if you have any questions. Basically, every work on the web, and I'll stick with the web for now, and everything involved in your website, meaning graphics, images, drawings, movies, anything that goes inside your website, including the design and layout of the page, is automatically copyrighted. In other words, you cannot take somebody else's design or content in any way and assume that it's your own or use it without their consent. It's considered an original work, and because of that, whoever created that original work has the official copyright. Now, at times, that means it's a company that owns it if an employee created it for the company. I'm not going to get into that great a depth. The bottom line is, if I'm going to work on a website and build a website, I can't go out and copy anybody else's information. Even though I can right-click and view the page source, so I could literally go into this code, copy it, and dump it onto a web page and modify a few things. That's not the case. Even though I can see the code, it doesn't mean it's mine. It is whomever created it, meaning in this example, the Copyright Office, or Educator as a company, or Adobe as a company, or whomever. So even if you do not see the copyright information at the bottom, and you can see this one really doesn't even have it, and that's because they know their work is automatically copyrighted. So even if there's nothing listed here, it's automatic. The images within the web page, even if you can right click and save them as your own, that is not to be done. There are places where you can go and within my cmarscreate.com website, I have an images area with a listing of different sites you can go to in order to purchase or obtain images for a website, or you can create your own. Everything within this course that's created for this specific course, I created it. So it is copyrighted, but it's copyrighted as an original work by me, not available for you. Now, as far as the course is concerned, the web design for the course is available to be used within the course. The PDFs are free for you to use, but that doesn't mean you can reuse them as your own. And that seems to be the big distinction. So if you plan or need or want to use anything from a website in terms of graphics, movies, design, anything, you always want to approach the original creator. They're the ones who own the copyright, whether it says so or not. 
Now let me go out to this particular site and this is still copyright.gov but if you go to the copyright office and you click on these copyright basics in the upper left the very first link that's what we have here and what this does is get into the legal terminology for a copyright and what's allowed and the bottom line for you is if it's on the web it's not yours and because of that somebody else owns the copyright unless it's your website and you created it and did all of the graphics for it then you do own it and have the right to reproduce it there's also a website in the Stanford University libraries there's a lot of really good information on copyright and basic information protection who owns what and this is getting really deep into the topic but I wanted to give you some resources. This is fairuse.stanford.edu, Stanford University in California. It's a U.S. copyright area, but they do cover a lot of information. You'll find copyright is fairly similar from country to country. If you are in a different country, you'll want to make sure to look over the copyright laws for your specific country because it does change. But the bottom line is, if you didn't create it, you don't have the right to reuse it or assume to others that it is your creation. There's also a pretty good, pretty good website here, Five Ways to Stay Out of Trouble for a Website. And because the web is so easy to copy from one site to another, it does give you the feeling that everything's out in the open and you can use whatever you want. And this rule number one, they can't state it any better. This is my rule. Assume it's protected. Always assume that. And then there's a few other options here. When in doubt, seek permission. Contact the author and ask them about it. So as long as you consider this when working on your website and creating your works, and also are aware of it, it shouldn't become an issue. If you want any further information, these are some good websites to go to. Because what applies on these websites is pretty much a global use of the copyright law. And if there's any questions for your specific country, if you're outside the U.S., make sure you look up the rules for your specific country. But the bottom line is, if you didn't create it, it's not yours to distribute or use freely. And if you did create it, even if it doesn't have copyright information on it, the assumption is that it is copyright protected if it's on the web. So those are a few things to think about when working out on the web. And also a few resources to go to to get more information about copyright and some other issues with regards to copyright law. This law does to tend to change quite a bit based on different lawsuits going on at all times. So make sure if there really is a question that you look into it for your specific circumstances. But that's an overview of copyright laws for websites and the information stored within a website as well.